Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless his name forevermore for his goodness and kindness and love that keeps on shocking us on a daily basis. His love is uncomparable. It is called agape. This is a kind of love which is not found among men, mostly because they don't know it. But this is the agape kind of love. This love is divine love, unconditional love, all-inclusive love. This is the power of God at its best. It works in love because the love is a dimension of God. The Bible tells us that God is love. So we bless him because of this love. This love has changed our lives. This love has been the center, the reason, the foundation of all that God has done. If you would ask God, what did you do? Why did you do what you do? Why did you do what you did? Or why are you so good? He would tell you, well, that's my nature. That's who I am. I am love. So blessing him is all we can do. Thanking him is all we can do because this is too much. Now I pray for you today that you'll be able to see this and may you be awakened in the reality of this love that it be tangible that it heal you heal your soul heal your body heal your environment heal your life in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray that you will be touched by his love and it will amend your heart. It will transform your life. It will change your life. In Jesus' mighty name, you'll be restored in your soul. This beautiful love, that it reign in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank God for this beautiful love. We thank God. Truly will never come to, to maximize or express, express ourselves as we would want to. I will say how much we have been affected by this love and how much we appreciate it because of this love. And that, that's okay, that's okay, because our calling is to bless the Lord, is to thank Him, living a life of thanksgiving. Living a life of thanksgiving, it is our calling after we have discovered this beautiful work that Jesus did for us, and this amazing heart of God. You see, the whole purpose of the gospel that I'm sharing with you all that you ever hear, it's not about many things it's actually about one thing you see there is a day jesus was seated with mother and and mary who was in the house and he had visited them and so mother was so much busy and interested into many things that she wanted to in her mind well warmly welcome jesus christ but jesus had not told her to do anything for him he actually wanted them to be there so that he may share with them what was on his heart. But Martha did not consider that as important. And so she was toiling, trying to put things together, or probably preparing breakfast or lunch or anything. And so she was irritated because her sister was seated with Jesus Christ 
and she was seated on her feet, on, on his feet rather, and she was listening from Jesus. And so Jesus was excited because somebody had given him the full and total attention. And so he was pouring all his knowledge and wisdom into this woman. So the sister who was busy some, uh, there trying to put things together, which Jesus did not even require, ask for, she came very complaining and she, she spoke to Jesus. Actually, if she could, she would have, uh, she was actually kind of blaming Jesus, <laughs> though she, she was talking about the sister, her sister always seated there, I mean, doing nothing. And it's like, tell her, tell her to come and help me. <laughs> Think about it. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are so, you, you are toiling so much. You are toiling so much. You are struggling a lot. You are into many things. But one thing is very important. One, one, one thing. And your sister have chosen this portion and nobody will take it away from her. You see, there is only one thing that is important. By the time you discover that one thing, the rest will be added to you. You know, that is the beauty of this gospel. The gospel reveals one thing. And that is the person of Jesus Christ. And that is his love. And that is his nature, his heart, revealing the heart of God. Revealing his heart. His heart is his purpose. I mean, if everybody could come to this knowledge, everything will be aligned. Aligned according to that knowledge. It's not about many things, many principles or rules or regulations or laws and so on and so forth, like people want to put it. No. You see, the Bible tells us that God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son. If, Jesus, if God had found it very necessary, he would have sent us his uh, laws or, or some principles or regulations. Now, am I saying that there are no laws and uh, principles? There are you know, universal laws, and so on and so forth. But you know what is important again, like I'm saying, you get to know one thing and the rest is clear. Because you see, the Bible tells us that in him, Christ Jesus, all wisdom and knowledge is hidden. In him, all wisdom, all kind of wisdom and knowledge is hidden in that person. So there's only one person to get to know Jesus Christ and the rest will be clear, you know. So that is exactly what we're trying to, to, to share with you, to help you understand that it's not about many things. Like Martha was busy doing it and thinking that Jesus was interested in all those stuff that she was doing according to her for him. Well, today we have to understand that it's about one thing. And that one thing is what you have to come to understand. This is exactly what Jesus says. John chapter 2, 12 rather, verse 26. We're reading, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. See, the idea of serving him is to follow him. <laughs> so he was like, what, what do you think about serving me? You, you're so busy to your own things. You're doing your own stuff instead of following me and listening to me. It's about me. It's not about, you know, doing many things. It's about me. And by the time you give me your attention, you will discover exactly what I want. And what I want will be your joy and your happiness. You know, we don't know that we don't know. And many times when we don't know that we don't know, we walk in ignorance. We walk in ignorance. We think we know enough. We think we are sufficient by ourselves. We don't know that all comes from him we don't even know we don't know that we don't know but when you know that you don't know that is a very good step and it's a very good start that means you're gonna go you're moving towards somewhere so what we have here he says if anyone serves me let him follow me so that is the point let him follow me let him follow me so if you want to serve Jesus, if you're talking about serving Jesus, first and foremost, you got to learn to follow him. Or in other words, focus on me. Focus on me. Let me be your focus. Let me be your focus. That is serving me. Am I your focus? Or a lot of things are taking away your attention. Am I uh, fighting or um, in competition with many things in your life? Oh, I am your attention. So this is what Jesus says. If anyone serves me, let him 
follow me. See, when you're talking about following somebody, it means you leave others or many other things that you're focusing on and you follow that person for a reason. So he's saying, if you want to serve me, what I call serving me is about following me. In other words, give me your total attention. Give me your total attention. Give me your total attention. And where I am, there are my servant who will be also. So the idea of following him or focusing on him, he says, it is not that you may follow me and I will, you know, turn back and say, oh, you see, I have many followers. It's not about that. The point is, I want you to be where I am. I am in a good position. I am in heaven. I am above. He came from above. I want you to be there as well. I am a victor. I win all things. I overcame everything. I want you to be there. So he says, and where I am, there are my servant will be also. So the idea is to be where he is. He's not a bad master who says, well, I'll sleep in a, a good bed and you will sleep out there trying to, uh, to look after me or, or um, and, and trying to keep security or to, to guard me and so on and so forth. No, you know, on, on the contrary, we don't guard Jesus. He's the one who guards us. You see, many other masters... The servants serve them. They fight for them. They protect them. But Jesus Christ was not protected by his servants or by his disciples. He, he was the one protecting them. He was the one leading them, feeding them. They never fed him. He's the one who fed them. He is so different and kind and unique. So he says, again, there's no wall of separation that I want between you and I. See, remember, he's talking about the wall of separation which was there between the, uh, the Jews and the Gentiles in the temple. So he's actually saying, look, before you even talk about you people becoming one, in my glorification, you people, you will be where I am. I want you to be where I am. In other words, I don't want to see any separation between me and you. So where you I am, so my servant will be. So he wants his servants to be where he is. Think about it. Why do you find this in the whole world? I mean, in history. There's no servant that you uh, will sleep where his mass is sleeping. In the same bed or in the same place, in the same luxury and so on and so forth. No. Generally, they will have the best portion and you will have the least. I mean, all these servants will try to fight for, for their boss because it's probably... Uh, throwing something for them and to 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 them and but this is the point the most important thing is that he is not the same like what you know he's different he's different he's saying i want you to be where i am and this is beautiful brothers and sisters i want to realize you to realize that he says if anyone serves me him, my father, we honor. That is what we call honor. See, he honors us. He wants, he wants to see honor in your life. He wants to see honor in your life. He's so amazing. He says, my father, we honor you. He's talking about making you honorable. He's talking about raising you to the place or position of honorable. Brothers and sisters, this is different from any other master we ever came to know. This one is different. He says, look, I make every servant an honorable person. He makes those cheap and ordinary servants of people 